mental toughness. What is it? How do you develop it? It is this nebulous term that nobody understands. Come watch this video and find out exactly how you can increase your mental toughness. Hey, this is Coach JR with Renegade Soccer Training. One of the most important parts about being a successful athlete is having incredible mental toughness. Having the grit to push through when things get tough. And that not only means in a game when things are on the line, but also on the practice field. So what we have is an entire system to help you understand yourself, how to motivate yourself during the tough times, and really how to find your passion and your confidence when the game's on the line. Let's start off with our first step. And the first step is to actually take a look inside and to know thyself. This is a seven step process for us where we ask you seven different questions. Go ahead and download the PDF that's attached below and work through this as we delve into finding more about you. Let's get started. All right, the first question comes down to progress. I want you to take a look at the last year and think to yourself, have I really made dramatic progress towards my soccer goals? And this might come to you and you say, wow, yeah, I'm actually bigger or faster or stronger, or I learned how to do a few things. But some of that is just you growing up and you getting better physically. So the question I really want you to think about is, relative to my peers, everyone else on my team, or maybe more importantly if you're in the ODP program, or among the state athletes, did I get demonstrably, markedly better than all of them over the past year? Here's the issue. When we get into this lull of just going to practice, and then maybe on off days we go, we pick up a ball, we take some shots, we knock it around with our friends, we think that this is the best road towards getting us where we want to be. But I would contend to you that there's a much, much better way. And I know that you always say to yourself, boy, I really should be doing more. And I'll, and I'll go ahead and do that. I'll read some articles and I'll figure it out and I'll get that started tomorrow. But honestly, tomorrow just stays tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. It never ever comes. But this uncertainty is exactly why we developed the Renegade Soccer Training System and specifically our burst system. You get so many touches on the ball and fit so quickly. You can literally take years of training and compress it into a few short months. So the thing I want you to ask yourself is, if you could improve one thing, what would be the very first thing if you look at yourself as a player what could I do right now that would really just open up the game for me? For about 95% of players, if they're really honest with themselves, there's two things. It's your ability to control the ball. If you could just control the ball in tight spaces when there's pressure, be cool under pressure and be able to either beat a person or deliver a ball out of space and keeping your head up the whole time. If you could do that, the game would change for you. And the next one is fitness. If you could look at your opponent late in the game and know I'm gonna run you into the ground, I can make that extra run and get back on defense because I'm fit and I'm confident that I can do it. That is what changes players from being good players to being great players or being a player who might be on the bench and they wanna get that starting spot to earning that starting spot. So the first question I have for you, again, have you made amazing progress and what one thing could you start on today that would make you a much, much better player? I'll see you in a minute. Great, thanks for taking a look at that first question. It's incredibly important. Let's move on to the second section. The next section is all about enjoyment. Because deep down, if you're gonna make a commitment we have to really understand, do you actually really enjoy soccer? So my question is, when you think about soccer and everything is quiet and everyone's away, there's no pressure, how do you feel about the game? Does it bring you in anxiety because you're nervous about performing? 
or do you actually just love to go out and touch the ball, feel it at your feet, push it past somebody and win? Maybe defend somebody and be able to take that ball away. Do you enjoy the pressure of your teammates counting on you? How do you feel about soccer? And here's why. Because whatever your goals are, it could be, hey, I just want to make the JV squad in high school because that's going to help out my status in high school. Or I want to be a varsity starter and our team's going to push to go for the state run. I want to be an all-conference, all-state. I want to make the ODP system. Or maybe get to that next level in college, earn a scholarship, and help pay for your education. Every single one of those goals is legitimate, and they are all very worthwhile. But each and every one is gonna take a commitment, and you're gonna to have to make the step from saying, if I want to be able to do those things, it has to be more than just showing up when everyone is there, and smiling and laughing and high-fiving and working on nutmegging everyone, right? That's fun, we love that. We all love ripping shots on the goal. But that's not really what gets you better. What gets you better is, do I love the game enough? And when I think about it, oh my, is that amazing. I love being out there. But am I willing to take that kind of passion and work on it alone? Because as a team, I have to be a better individual player. And do I have enough love for the game and my teammates that I will develop myself? So my question to you is, when you're sitting at home and you're just watching TV or working on your homework, spending time with the family, do you long to be out on the pitch, in the sun, with the ball at your feet, working at your game? That's the big second question. Work on it and we'll be right back. All right, I hope that last section went well for you. The next section is being yourself. I have a question for you. Why do you actually play soccer? And this goes beyond the enjoyment of the game. But this is something that you have to know about yourself because you have to, during times when you don't want to do stuff, you have to be able to dig down and push yourself through those low times. Are you like, a competition junkie and you just honestly play you got into soccer but honestly you'd love to play go pick up basketball or baseball or flag football or something you just love to compete so much and soccer happens to be your sport that's okay a competition junkie that's fairly common actually do you love the team like do you like to show up and hang out because either the guys on your team you just know and you hang out at school and you go to the movies together or the girls you go to the mall and the movies and you just hang out together on the weekends and it's a really cool team atmosphere you like to hang out that can be another very legitimate reason another is you actually enjoy being a teammate and you love the struggle of the game soccer is an incredibly hard game do you enjoy being a teammate who works together to overcome adversity, work through those hard practices, all that conditioning, and work to beat a team that maybe you shouldn't? Is that what drives you? Another one is, do you have a certain status that's just tied up in you being a soccer player? And this comes in many different forms. It could be that when you were a little kid, you started playing soccer, your parents got into it, and now they seem to be maybe even more excited about playing soccer than you do at times. That can be a status in your home. Or maybe you're just a varsity soccer player at your high school and there comes a lot of status with you being a starting varsity athlete. It could also be status. So our next step in understanding you is not only do you enjoy the game, but what really, really drives you. Another one that I didn't even mention that's actually very, very common is fear. It's actually fear. Who many people think maybe the best basketball player that ever lived, Michael Jordan, he literally would end a season winning the NBA championship, being the MVP of the league and of the championship, and he would get himself so mentally prepared for that off season to train hard because he said, I'm not good enough to make the team next year. I'm scared of being cut, and I don't ever want to feel that way. That drove him. I'll tell you my own personal story. I was a competition junkie. 
And so when I was young, I loved to compete. I would leave practice, I played football, I played soccer, I played tennis, I played track. I would play pick up basketball for hours every single day. But they knew that about me. So in order to motivate me, I would be in competition at all times. A training session, we'd set it up with competition and I would tear that up. So the question for you is, what drives you? Why do you actually play this game? You sit and think about that and come up with the answer and it'll shed a lot of insight into how we can motivate you. I'll see you in a minute. All right, the next section is gonna move from looking at you to looking outward at your support system. And that's what this is titled, your support. When we look at your support, what we're trying to do is figure out all of the people in your life who are supporting you and contributing towards your gains, contributing towards you being successful. We also need to look on the other side of the coin at the people who are causing drama. And here's why. All of us have a very limited time every single day, and honestly, a very limited amount of energy and focus. And so if we are consistently running into drama, that's not a good thing. That's gonna cause us to not be the best student we can be, not be the best athlete we can be, not be the best friend, maybe not be the best boyfriend or girlfriend, and definitely not be the best family member to your brothers and sisters and mom and dad. So we need to reduce drama as much as possible. And obviously relationships are very complex things. Social dynamics is, is an absolutely extraordinarily complex thing. But there are very small things that you can do that can help lessen drama. The first one is to actually identify people who you deal with on a regular basis who are causing you extra stress. And then you need to really look hard at those relationships and say, am I spending a little bit too much time with them? And this can be from your peer group, a teammate, or even a family member. You know, sometimes it's going to be your parents that cause you a lot of stress because you're young and you're trying to spread your wings and you're a teenager. So frankly, you're probably a pain in the booty. And so there might be some tension there. But I almost guarantee you there are some small things that you could do that would lessen that tension between you and your parents. In your normal social group, the same thing applies. Who in your social group causes you drama? And this could be something that you think is good. This is my best friend or this is one of my besties and they are always causing drama in your life. You really need to examine that because like I said, there's only so many hours in the day and if you're truly trying to do something great, truly take yourself to the next level as an athlete, as a student for sure, you should be focusing on that, it's going to take a lot of energy. And you might have to think about drawing back from those relationships or speaking with them, building a bridge and really doing the small things that you know would make a difference in that relationship with them to lessen the drama. Now, on the other side of the coin, there are people in your life who are absolutely incredibly energizing. And this can be a coach, a teacher, a friend, an older brother or sister maybe, or honestly, best case, your parents. What I would do is I would reach out to those people. Try and maximize your time with those people and ask them, will you be a mentor? Will you help me along the path? Share your goal to make yourself into a better person with that person. I guarantee you, if you open up to somebody and you say, this is my goal, and every single time you talk to me, I get so much energy, I walk away excited and ready to bring my game to the next level, bring my study habits up, really tackle those issues that I have to tackle, they would be honored to help contribute to your path. It's just the nature of who we are. So, lesson drama, and increase the relationships that provide you energy. Go ahead and get out your sheet and answer those questions, and I'll see you in a minute.